Hi everyone, I'm Ian and welcome to tutorial 18 on how to add, subtract, multiply and divide fractions. Okay, so in order to do this tutorial, I'm going to split it into two parts. Firstly, when we're focusing on adding and subtracting fractions and the second when we're looking at multiplying and dividing because they're very similar. Well, no, 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 they're actually very different. So adding and subtracting are a very similar process and multiplying and dividing is a very similar process. But the two processes are very different. And the reason why I'm actually doing them all in one tutorial is because one of the key things that we need to know is the difference between the two processes. So it's actually really important to think about adding and subtracting fractions and multiplying and dividing fractions together so that you can pick up the skill of how to differentiate between when to do the method for adding and subtracting and when to do the method for multiplying and dividing. So first of all, we're gonna look at adding and subtracting. So let's consider the question, what is one quarter add one third? Now, the first thing that I need to tell you here is that one quarter and one third are different types of fraction. So if you think about it before, we were talking about biscuits in a different lesson, and we had a quarter of a biscuit is when we divide the biscuits into four, okay? And a third of a biscuit is when we divide the bits into three. You cannot write a number as a collection of quarters and a collection of thirds, it won't work. And you cannot add quarters to thirds as they stand. With adding fractions, we can add halves to halves, we can add thirds to thirds, we can add quarters to quarters, we can add fifths to fifths, we can add sixths to sixths, but we cannot, we absolutely cannot add fractions of different sorts. So I can't do a quarter add a third, I can't do two fifths add three sevenths, okay? Well, I can't do it unless I make a change somehow to make the fractions the same sort of fraction. Now, if you join me for tutorial 15, you will have seen how we can simplify fractions and how fractions can be equivalent to different things. So for example, I know that one quarter is two eighths, okay? So if this was useful, okay, I would be able to use that information to help me add fractions together. Like I know here that one third is two sixths, okay? So I need to think about these sorts of things. Now with adding fractions, when you've got two completely different denominators, well, that's what we call the bottom of the fraction. When we've got two completely different numbers on the bottom, what I like to do is draw two rectangles where the width is one of the bottoms and the length is the other. So here we go. If we look at the board, I've drawn a three by four rectangle here. Now what you might notice is that inside the rectangle, there's gonna be 12 squares, okay? So I'm actually gonna draw this rectangle twice just to help us think about what's going on. In the first rectangle, I'm now gonna shade a quarter of that rectangle. Okay, so as you can see, a quarter of that rectangle is three out of the 12 squares. Now on the other rectangle, I'm gonna shade in one third. So I'm gonna divide it into three and I'm gonna shade in one third and I can see that one third is actually four out of the 12 squares. So here we go. One quarter is three out of 12 and one third is four out of 12. So bingo, we have it. We can now add these numbers together. So. 3 out of 12, add 4 out of 12, gives us 7 out of 12. Now remember, we don't add the bottoms because the bottom is talking about what we have. So we have 3 twelfths, add 4 twelfths, gives us 7 twelfths. So the 12 at the bottom is just telling us what type of number the top number is. So we're talking about twelves. Anyway, there we have it. That's that example one complete. So let's have a go at another example. Right, here we go. I've got question two here. And question two says, what is two fifths take away one sixth? Right, now I'm gonna draw the rectangles again. <laughs> the rectangles are gonna be quite big for this one, but um, it's useful to do just to help us visualize. 
Notice that this has a takeaway in the middle. It doesn't actually change anything at all. It just means that we're going to take away rather than add. So I'm going to draw my two rectangles here, five on one side, six on the other, five on one side, six on the other. Okay, this first rectangle, I'm going to divide it into five pieces and I'm going to shade two of them. Right, let's have a look. I've got two of these shaded, okay? If I look at the squares, I can see that that is two fifths, but I could also see that I've shaded, hmm, how many have I shaded? I've shaded two fifths, I've shaded 12 thirtieths, okay? Right, I've shaded 12 thirtieths there. Now this other one, okay, I'm gonna shade one sixth, and one sixth is five thirtieths. So here we go, we've changed the numbers. So instead of having our fractions in their simplest form, what we've now got, is we've got the fractions in their more complicated forms, but so that they're in the same forms so that we can add them or subtract them together. So if we look at 12 thirtieths, take away 5 thirtieths, that's gonna give us 7 thirtieths. Right, let's try one more question. So this is one half add three quarters. So this time I'm gonna do my rectangles, two squares on one side, four on the other, two squares on one side, four on the other, so here we go, we've got one half, add three quarters, so I'm going to shade in a half of the first rectangle, which I can then see is going to be four out of the eight, and then for the second rectangle, I'm going to shade in three quarters, which I can see is going to be six out of the eight. We can do four out of eight, add six out of eight, and get ten out of eight. Now, what we can do from here is we can simplify this, because I can see that they're both even, and I can divide both of these by two, so 10 over 8 will equal 5 over 4. Now 5 over 4 is a mix, is a top-heavy fraction. So let's see if we can convert that into a mixed number using our skills from before. And so I can see that we're talking about quarters here. How many quarters, how many completes? So four quarters makes a whole. How many lots of four quarters are in five? There's one lot of four in five. So we can cash out one whole and we'll have one left over. So 5 over 4 is equal to 1 and 1 quarter. So there we go, that's that question done. Right, if you want more practice on adding and subtracting fractions, um, go over to crackmaths.co.uk, have a look at the site. But now I'm going to move on to multiplying and dividing fractions. So first of all, I'm going to do multiplying fractions because multiplying fractions is the easiest of all of the fraction things but you're not to confuse it with anything else, okay? So when you find out how to multiply fractions, you are going to want to do this for everything, but you've got to remember, it's only multiplying fractions that is this easy. Everything else is super hard, okay? Not super hard, but just there's more of a process to it. But multiplying fractions is straightforward. So let's have a look at question three, which is three over eight, multiplied by 2 over 5. So to multiply fractions, we simply do the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So 3 times 2 is 6, 8 times 5 is 40. So 3 over 8 times 2 over 5 becomes 6 over 40. Often with multiplying fractions, you can then simplify them. Okay, so 6 over 40, I can see that I can divide both of those by 2. So 6 over 40 becomes 3 over 20. And there we have it. That is multiplying fractions. Let's try one more. Let's do 1 over 4 multiplied by 1 over 3. So remember, 1 over 4 times 1 over 3, multiplying fractions is simple. We multiply the tops with the tops and the bottoms with the bottoms. So 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, right. So that is multiplying fractions. Top times top bottom times bottom. Lastly, we've got dividing fractions. Now, dividing fractions is very similar to multiplying fractions, but what we've got to do is we've got to turn around the second number. So if I see here on the board, I've got two over three divided by one over four. What I have to do for that is because the number between the one and the three, that line, that means divide, I'm actually here saying, 2 over 3 divided by 1 divided 
by 4. And what, the way this all works out, this divide divide thing, because we're basically doing divide divide, um, is it works out that it's the same as if you multiply by this fraction turned upside down. That means, so that means 2 over 3 divided by 1 over 4 is the same as doing 2 over 3 times 4 over 1. And now that we've got it into the multiplication form, we just multiply across. So 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 1 is 3, so that means that this is going to be 8 over 3. Okay, let's find one more to practice here. Let's have a look at, um, let's say we've got a half divided by 3 quarters. So remember, we've got one half divided by three quarters. Now remember, the fraction thing here means it's like divide the three, divide the four. Okay, so all of that business has to sort itself out. And the way we sort itself out that is we just turn the times, in, we turn the divide into a times, and then we flip the fraction upside down. So if I had a half divided by three over four, that's the same as a half times four over three, okay? So a half times four over three is one times four over two times three. So one times four is four, two times three is six. So this is equal to four over six, which is equal to two over three. So there we go. Right, let's have a look at some scenario questions. Okay, so for the scenario questions for this one, I'm gonna have a look at one of each type, okay? so. I, I know this lesson's a little bit longer, but it's worthwhile and it's good to be able to quickly think about what type of question is this? Is this add, is this subtract, is it multiply, is it divide, and which is the one that I need? So question one says, Jane has quarter of a pie and Mark has three eighths of a pie. How much pie do they have all together? Okay, so, this question is an add because they've got pi, they've got pi, they're bringing their pi together. We want to know how much pi they have. Okay, so we've got one quarter add three over eight. Right, so I'm gonna draw out my tray bake, four by eight. So one quarter of my four by eight rectangle shows me that I have got eight out of 32. Okay, three eighths of my four by eight rectangle is gonna be 12 out of 32. So I have got eight out of 32, add 12 out of 32. So eight add 12 is 20. So I have got 20 32s, I've got 20 32s of a pi. So I can simplify this to become 10 sixteenths, and I can simplify this again to become five eighths. So I have five eighths of a pi. Well, I don't. Jane and Mark have five eighths of a pie. Okay, right, let's look at another question. Right, so here we go. Question six says, um, Lisa has three quarters of a cake and Pedro has half of a cake. How much more cake does Lisa have than Pedro? Right, so let's have a look. We've got here three quarters. This is gonna be takeaway because I'm trying to work out how much more she has. So three quarters take away a half. So I'm gonna here draw a four by two rectangle. Divide Lisa's rectangle into four, shade in three parts of that. And then I can see that Lisa has six eighths of a cake. I'll draw the same rectangle again for Pedro. So Pedro has half of this, so I can see that he has four eighths. So I'm looking at what is six eighths take away four eighths. So six eighths take away four eighths leaves me with two eighths which means two eighths, they're both even, so I can simplify it. Two eighths equals one quarter. So Lisa has one quarter more of cake than Pedro. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. Okay, so for this question, I'm gonna look at question 12, and it says here, a recipe calls for a third of a cup of sugar, but you want to make half of the recipe. How much sugar do you need? <laughs> Instantly, I said multiplying was easy, but actually when it comes to the questions and how it appears in the words, it sounds, it's very complicated actually. But basically we've got to read this question and really kind of phrase it in a fraction function form. Okay, so a, quest, a recipe calls for one third of a cup of sugar, 
but you want to make half of the recipe. So you want half of the recipe. So you want half of that third. Half of that third means a half times a third. Okay, so you want half of the sugar required. So you want half of one third. So half times one third. Now we've got that. It's straightforward. So one times one is one. Two times three is six. So you want one sixth of a cup of sugar. Okay, right. Now let's try the next one. Okay, let's have a look at this question for division. So here we go, we've got question 16. It says, if you have three quarters of a cake and you want to divide it equally among two people, how much does each person get? So basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at three quarters divided by two. Now, this there's a trick to this. Um, if you ever see a whole number appear in a fraction question like this, you just turn it into a fraction by putting it over one. So this question is essentially gonna be, what is three quarters divided by two over one? Now remember, when we divide, we flip the fraction. So three over four divided by two over one becomes three over four times one over two. So three over four times one over two is gonna be three over eight. So there we go. So we need, we, each person will get three eighths of the cake. Okay, I know this has been a lot, but it's an important topic and it's one that you should spend some time on. Firstly, remembering the difference between the things and then also practicing the techniques in general. Um, yep, yeah, if you need any practice, remember there's loads of questions at crackmaths.co.uk, so please visit that site and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Okay, goodbye.